Hey, so welcome. We are going to be talking through the concepts for a rotational unit for AP Physics C as well as AP Physics. And the very first thing that we want to start talking about is how to relate what we have learned before in terms of kinematics, which is the study of motion without reference to forces or the cause of that motion. How do we relate that in terms of kinematics, translational kinematics to rotational kinematics? Because that builds on things that we have learned before. And so that's what we're going to start with is a lesson on rotational kinematics. So let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, as a quick reminder, I do want to talk through what a radian is. And this GIF or GIF, however it's pronounced, animation right here does a good job of thinking that through. If you take a look at the radius here, and if you extend that radius out to what's called the arc length, which would be the outside of the circle right here, it's shown in purple right there. If you happen to have these two lengths as exactly the same, the angle that is traced out right here is exactly one radian. That's not a coincidence, that's by design. So that's what we mean by a radian. It's a way of measuring angles, you could say. Radians do come up throughout the unit, and so I wanted to remind you of what we meant by a radian. All right, and so some other basic intro ideas that we need to talk through. If we think about this angle, this theta, as it changes with time, over here so you have your initial line and an angle is a measurement from that initial line to its ending point over here if we think about it in those terms you've got either delta theta or theta sometimes it's just shortened to theta it's understood that we're talking about this whole angle right here if we're talking about this theta right here so either way is going to be fine but you have delta theta or theta being equal to the arc length and sometimes you can even see in the animation that this is written as a delta S right here. In any case, what we're talking about is the definition of that angle theta, you could say. And what do we mean by that? Well, well, it's similar to the definition of a radian. It goes back to the arc length divided by the radius. And that's what we mean by this angle. And so if we take that angle and we introduce a time component for that, then we can talk about the angular velocity. This, by the way, this theta, we oftentimes refer to as this or this up here as our angular displacement. So it's the angular version of displacement, so to speak. Whereas this right here, we have different names for. The letter itself is omega. It looks like a W, but it's omega. And we can describe this as angular speed or angular velocity. And later... We may even talk about this as angular frequency. If you're talking about if this is going around many times in one second, it may be more helpful to describe this as an angular frequency as well. In any case, you're talking about the change in theta over time, or the angular displacement divided by time. And so this is just like average velocity down below here. So I'm going to show you in a more formalized way how to compare these things. But there is one more comparison that I want to get out of the way as we get started with understanding our terms in terms of what we're dealing with with rotational kinematics. So let's take a look and that is going to be what we mean by our average angular acceleration down here. And so this is the rotational version of average acceleration you could say. And so we just define it as our delta omega or our change in angular speed divided by time. So if you take a look at this animation over here it speeds up as it moves around clockwise throughout the cycle that you see here. So it does have an acceleration, and it's not like a linear acceleration. We're talking about the rate at which this angle speeds up, and that's what we mean by that, and that is described by this alpha average over here. So none of these equations are on your equation sheet in physics, by the way, and that's crucial. These are things you should probably just memorize so that you can have a baseline understanding of what these things mean. And I'm going to show you an easier way to go about doing that in just a moment. All right, and so let's do some comparisons of some ideas that things that are just understood that you know that are not on an equation sheet, things that you should know if you're taking a physics or an AP physics class. First of all, whenever you have delta anything, again, this is just basic reminders dealing with kinematics. Um, you're dealing with your final minus your initial. So you could have this notation right here is used by AP. And some students get confused by this, x naught, for instance. That would mean the x at time equals 0. So that's why we use that notation. So that literally means at time equals 0, or our initial x position right here. And then they don't have a final notation down here. You may have seen this 
uh, in a similar way in a traditional physics class just because it's a little easier to work with. I actually prefer this. I think it's a little bit more clear. It's not that tough in terms of writing an extra subscript or two, but just be aware that this is how AP is going to do things. So whenever we have our rotational version over here, I'm going to show you it's still going to be your final minus your initial whenever you have a delta something. All right, and then if we think about our average velocity, this is a very basic equation that you probably used at the very beginning of your school year if you're in a regular physics class or early on in the year if you're dealing with an AP physics class. So it's the definition of average velocity. As far as I can tell, it's not on your equation sheet. And so what that means is this is just something that you're expected to know. Similarly, in a rotational sense, you could say the angular speed is the angular displacement divided by time. That also is going to be measured in radians per second, whereas this over here is going to be measured in meters per second. I often say to students, when in doubt, if you're not sure what you're dealing with in a rotational unit, please look at the units. The units are a huge clue as to what you're dealing with. If you get these variables confused, look at the units. Lastly, we want to talk about our average acceleration here. So this is our basic equation here in a baseline physics class. This is going to be measured in meters per second squared. And over here, we've got our angular acceleration over here. That's going to be our change in angular speed or angular velocity divided by time. That's going to be measured in radians per second. And to summarize, here are three equations on the left-hand side that you'll see on your AP equation sheet. The fourth is not on here, although sometimes that's written into a regular physics classroom. This is a way of thinking about it in terms of easier notation. You can pause that if you want to take a look at that. What I do want to point out on this page, though, this is based on a handout I've given to my students previously. Really important here, I want you to notice in this column over here that we are ignoring something. That means we are not solving for something. We're just literally ignoring a variable. And that is a clue because when you approach a problem, you oftentimes don't know what equation to use because for these style problems, you have multiple equations that you could be using here. So you start out by listing out what you know for the problem. Then you think about, all right, what am I ignoring? And I don't mean what, are, what am I solving for? and don't have yet. I mean literally ignoring in the problem. And if you can find that, if you can find what the problem is ignoring out of these variables over here, then you can go ahead and say, well, I'm going to begin with that equation. And that's one way to do this. All right, we are going to take these concepts that you have learned most likely in your kinematics section of a course and apply them to a rotational section of the course. And so these are three equations that are on your equation sheet for translational kinematics. And these are the versions that are on the rotational unit. And I do want to point out one exception. This bottom equation right here is not on the equation sheet. So that's important. You can quickly derive that if you know the correlation here between these variables and these variables over here. You can quickly write that out based on the equation you have. And that's a strategy that can be useful. But you can also do this in multi-step. So I'm going to give you an example of a problem in just a moment where if you can figure this out, you can do this in one step. Based on this equation over here, you can do this in one step. Or if you cannot do that, then what you can do is do it in two steps. So you solve for time over here, take your time, plug it in, and you eventually solve for this angular displacement value. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. And so I'm going to go ahead and just let you read the problem right here. Pause it if you need to. Rather than me reading at you, I'm going to save some time. All right, so let's take a look at this. What you're going to start out the problem doing is writing down the given values in terms of our variables. This is crucial. A lot of students skip this step to their detriment. If you take the time to write this out, this is doing physics, putting parts of the word problem into variables that we need. All right, so then based on that, what we're going to do is we're going to think about what equation to use. And if you look at the data of what we have, if we know this equation, we can go ahead and just jump in and do this equation in one step. If we don't, like I was saying, you're going to have to solve for time with this equation up here and then go down and solve for your delta theta down here. So you can do it in one step or two steps. How could you do it in one step? Well, you do have this equation on your equation sheet. So if you can rewrite this in a rotational sense over here, you can do it in one step. Either way is going to be fine, but there are easier ways 
of doing things and there are tougher ways of doing things and you are going to be pressed for time on the test so please be efficient all right and so going back to the problem i'm going to go ahead and write that third equation down below and start isolating and plugging in what i know i know my final angular speed or angular velocity is going to be zero and so i'm going to start isolating for my delta theta for this value over here because we want to know how far it goes i can figure out how far it goes in terms of radians how far that angle has been displaced i can use another equation to be able to solve for how far the actual coin travels all right so i'm continuing with the problem and just continuing to work out what i know i can solve for my delta theta here and i end up with 79 radians all right then we're going to take that and based on an equation i had given you earlier so remember this is not on your equation sheet but this is the definition of what we mean by angular displacement you could think of it going back to the very beginning idea about what a radian is that's how you could do this here you continue go ahead and solve for your s so you're going to multiply your delta theta times r and you end up with 0 0.995 meters that's how far this coin travels before it comes to a rest so that's an example of how you would do a rotational kinematics problem using strategies of writing out your known values first figuring out what equation you're going to use remembering to ask yourself what is being ignored in the equation as a clue as to what equation to start the problem with so i hope this has been helpful and let's continue with some more lessons.